This is the Motorola Edge 50 Pro disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a red rubber gasket around it. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there is less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the Moonlight Pearl backplate, which is basically some type of plastic. The LED flashboard is located here. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off, so you won't need to take apart the phone to replace those. At this point, there are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now the battery cable needs to be disconnected from the main board, followed by the rest of the cables. Taking a look at this top plastic cover, we can see the laser autofocus and ambient light sensor on the secondary board, some antenna lines drawn which are the light gray color lines, including the NFC antenna, as well as the wireless charging coil. Looking at the back, we can see a large area of graphite film to help transfer heat. There's additional graphite film over the motherboard. Now the second battery cable also needs to be disconnected from the main board. The white, black and blue coaxial cables can be disconnected from the main board by just popping them off.
Taking a look at the main board, we can see the 50 megapixel primary camera, the 10 megapixel telephoto, and the 13 megapixel ultra wide lens. The main and telephoto camera have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, as well as a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. Looking at the other side, we can see the proximity sensor on the top corner, the 50 megapixel front facing camera, as well as graphite film, copper tape, and thermal paste on the back shields to help transfer heat. Once the graphite film and copper tape has been peeled back, we can see additional thermal paste on top of the processor, as well as these chips. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. This is the SIM reader board. And here's the sub board or charger port board. There's another liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker. Here's a look at the other side. We can see a red rubber gasket around the charger port. As for the primary microphone, it's located underneath this covered shield. And here's a look at the bottom speaker. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held down with some adhesive, and there's an antenna board on this corner, which is held down with a Phillips screw. The fingerprint sensor is located here, which is held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just heat it up and pry it off. There are rubber gaskets and mesh filters over the microphone openings, as well as the speaker. Both microphones are seated above the holes, so they won't get damaged if you accidentally insert the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole. However, on this phone, the bottom microphone filter is seated against the frame, so that may get damaged if you pierce it but the microphone itself will be fine. There's also another liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker over here. So moving on to the battery, I'm surprised to see that Motorola is still not implementing any of the pull tabs or battery pull pouches to help you pry the battery off. So in this case, you're gonna have to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute. So it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. This is the 4500 milliamp hour battery. And you'll always see a rated and typical capacity written on these batteries. So once the battery has been peeled off, we can see this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard and SIM reader, as well as the flex cable for the screen which is right out to an opening in the mid frame. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws in the top plastic cover, you'd have to disconnect the battery cables, as well as the flex cable for the screen from the main board, Pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable, at which point you heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. Once these text cables have been peeled back, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber, which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard. And the copper vapor chamber helps to transfer heat. One thing that Motorola does, which I hate, is that on a lot of their phones, 
They route the flex cable for the volume keys and power button through the midframe behind the screen. So if you needed to replace that flex cable for the power button or volume keys, you would actually have to pry the screen off as well. And prying off a working or undamaged screen poses a high chance of damaging it. And finally, the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.